being kind and compassionate. So I want to be a prophet like Isaiah. I want to not. I don't think I'm directly inspired by God, obviously, but I want to be courageous and prophetic. Um, I tend to err more on the side of being a bit too, uh, a bit too strong, and others may err on the side of being far too diplomatic. You know, mastering the art of almost saying something. If we can combine the courage and humility of Isaiah, I think we'll be doing well. I like the way Thomas A. Kempis put it 600 years ago. Be not angry that you cannot make others as you wish them to be, since you cannot make yourself as you wish to be. Oh, I like the way he's put that. Be not angry that you cannot make others as you wish them to be, since you cannot make yourself as you wish to be. Well, it's kind of a reflection on Matthew 7, verses 1 to 5. There needs to be that humility. And yet, we shouldn't be so humble that we have nothing to say. And I'm going to return to uh, Abraham Heschel's book, The Prophets, and read one of my favorite excerpts from any book I've ever read. And it's about the prophets. And this excerpt is called The Blast of Heaven. And I'd like to read most of it um, as we move towards the end of the lesson. To a person endowed with prophetic sight, everyone else appears blind. To a person whose ear perceives God's voice, everyone else appears deaf. No one is just. No knowing is strong enough, no trust complete enough. The prophet hates the approximate. He shuns the middle of the road. Man must live on the summit to avoid the abyss. There's nothing to hold to except God. Carried away by the challenge, the demand to straighten to straighten out man's ways, the prophet is strange, one-sided, and unbearable extremist. Others may suffer from the terror of cosmic aloneness. The prophet is overwhelmed by the grandeur of divine presence. He's incapable of isolating the world. There's an interaction between man and God, which to disregard is an act of insolence. Isolation is a fairy tale. The prophet disdains those for whom God's presence is comfort and security. To him it is a challenge, an incessant demand. God is compassion, not compromise, justice, though not inclemency. The prophet's predictions can always be proved wrong by a change in man's conduct, but never the certainty that God is full of compassion. The prophet's word is a scream in the night, while the world is at ease and asleep. The prophet feels the blast from heaven. That passage, that passage has touched me through the years. And when I think of Isaiah, I'm reminded of it. What do we learn about God from our lesson? Probably more than I've been able to put into these few points I'll close on. But I have four observations. First, and it's, I almost hesitate to say it because it, it sounds cheap, it sounds... How can you even talk about God in a meaningful way uh, with these kinds of adjectives? Let me just go. God is glorious, awesome, and holy. That's the first thing we see. He's awesome. Second, his presence is overwhelming, even terrifying. Don't listen to others who, who minimize that. Third, he longs to be gracious to us. And fourth, those he touches and cleanses, he sends to deliver his message, those he touches and cleanses, the Lord sends out to bring the news.